Hey guys, and welcome back to another sortie for Alex's Flying Club. Today we're going to be flying in Florida, and um, I have a couple nice sceneries to show you guys. The first one is this little strip that we're going to be taking off from. It's called Bear Island, and it's in... Um, it's located in a lake in northern Florida, the island itself, and it's got a little unlisted uh, private airstrip on it, which is pretty darn cool. And we're going to be taking a Corsair off from it. We'll see if, uh, if we can make it happen. So there it is in the middle of the lake. I might even do a touch and go. There's a bigger lake over here, Lake George, which we're going to be using for navigation. And we're going to be flying to somewhere around here to the Fantasy of Flight Museum Airport, which is kind of one of my favorite places in terms of uh, aviation in America. I've never been myself, but I'd really like to go, but I've seen a lot of videos which uh, the founder of the place, Kermit Weeks, has put out on YouTube. I can get more into that as we do the flight. But for now, let's head back to our little Bear Island airstrip. Here's our Corsair. It's dawn, so I'm not using real world time, but I am using real world weather. Weather looks pretty nice. Corsair looks pretty nice here. Whoa. In the sunlight. Of course, in my VF-17 livery. Lieutenant Davenport's Corsair. Let's jump inside. All right. So it's getting light out. I don't think I don't need to put on the cockpit light. Turn that on and get the plane ready for engine start. Reserve fuel tank. I'll have to remember to take that off of reserve once we're in the air. Uh, this tail wheel is unlocked, so we'll have to lock it before takeoff. Let's set mags to both. What else do we need to do here? We can open up the cowl flaps. I realized in my previous stream that when I say cowl flaps, it sounds like cow flaps. And I've noticed other people, there's just something about that word that makes it sound like you're saying cow flaps rather than cowl flaps. But that's neither here nor there. Let's, uh, let's check our checklist. Mixture's idle prop is going to be low pitch. Fuel selectors and reserve cowl flaps are fully open. Throttles open an inch. Engine start checklist. Battery switches on. Fuel pump can come on. You can prime about three seconds here. Let's remember to set our parking brake before engine start. And start switch is going to come on, and then we'll add the mixture. Let's do that. Engine's catching, so adding full mixture. And fuel pump can come off. We can open up our intercooler flaps. And lean it out a bit for taxiing operations. Let's set RPM to be a 1000. That is set. And we're going to let the engine warm up a little bit. It's going to get dark in here throughout the stream, so let me turn on my lights in the room a little bit. I'll be right back. We got those lights on. Engine's warming up. Canopy's still open. You can see that uh, this is a nice freeware scenery. It's even got some uh, volumetric grass here on the side. And it's got a 
It, it's just an airstrip in, uh, in the middle of a forest on a small island, as I showed you guys. But it's even got a white picket fence that we'll see it on our uh, on our rollout on takeoff. I'm gonna set my first uh, heading. It's gonna be two six three. And that's going to get us to the north part of Lake George. Again, I wish I could show you guys, but for some reason my OBS streaming software has been glitching out on me and not allowing me to show Google Chrome. So uh, you can, if you want to follow along, feel free to click on my channel page under current flight. I have a link to my Skyvecker that I'm using. So I'm going to be doing VFR navigation. Our first waypoint is going to be north of Lake George that I showed you guys uh, a few minutes ago. That big lake in northern central Florida. And then we're going to fly west to avoid some restricted airspace. The central California and northern California area are kind of, uh, in my opinion, just a big mess of small little fields, tons of lakes, and then some restricted and uh, Bravo airspace areas that create these narrow corridors for you to fly through. So it's a, it's a challenging airspace, just like some parts of Southern California are, and we're gonna be we're gonna be uh, flying through one of those corridors west to avoid the restricted airspace, and then we're gonna head south to the Fantasia Flight Airfield, and we'll have to be careful. There's some um, towered airfields along the way. There's some landmarks that we have to hit. A few lakes that I'm using for navigation and eventually we'll end up at the museum and uh, airfield which will be pretty exciting and it'll just be getting really light out so we can see that nice uh, freeware scenery that I have for fantasy of flight as well all right generator can come on avionics can come on let's get our lights as well What do we have here? These lights, formation lights, landing lights will leave. Oh, we're on the runway, why not? We can turn those on as well. Kito Hee will come, in, come on before takeoff. Just a minute or two more for the warm up of the engine. Trying to decide whether to do a touch and go on this little field. I mean, I may just forego it to save time, but it is tempting. All right, let's take a look at our takeoff checklist. Let's well before we do that, let's set a few things up on our own. That to heat. Let's close that up. Let's set cowl flaps to two thirds. And I close the intercooler flaps. Let's roll forward a few feet just so that we're, we make sure that we make sure that the tail wheel is going to be locked in a straight position and not sideways. What else do we have? Trims are set, reserve tank is set. Uh, I think we're ready for the checklist. And I always forget the flaps, and we'll definitely need them for this field. Flaps 30 set. Alright, we're ready for takeoff. Gonna mark the time, mark the fuel. Two hundred thirty six gallons. All right, let's get going. So, for takeoff, we're gonna quickly set fifty four inches of manifold pressure. I may actually hold the brakes down. Uh, as we as we set the manifold pressure. So ready, 
set and go. Don't have a lot of room to work with here, and I've got to make sure not to run into the tree line. Ah! <laughs> I think we ran into the water a little bit there. I couldn't see the the end of the runway. That's alright. <laughs> Didn't look too bad. Alright. Gear's coming up. And let's raise our flaps as we pick up speed. Let's come back on the let's come back on the throttle, come back on the RPMs. What do we have for normal speed? I think 2350 on the RPM. I'm not mistaken. Mistaken, actually, I may be mistaken. 2150 for normal operations. So let's make one little loop around the island and then be on our way. It's really a nice little uh, freeware scenery, and I'll post the link to it on my channel page as well. Got a nice little summer house with the with the boat there. Getting a little bit of a frame frame loss with that weather loading. Now that's better. And there's the airstrip. That looks looks really nice. Okay, so let's let's head over to Lake George. Hopefully we can redeem our takeoff with a really nice landing at Fantasy of Flight. And I'm, I'm going to really stay low to the ground. I'm not going to climb too high. That's why I said it's normal speed right off the get-go. I'm just going to climb just enough to be able to have good visibility. And let's close our canopy now that we're gaining speed. There's Lake George, and we're looking for just the northern end of Lake George. That's our uh, that's our target. I'll just go right on the end of that peninsula. Is what I'm shooting for. All right, we can close our cowl flaps. Turn off our landing lights. Trim out the aircraft. And that's looking good. Let's just do the after takeoff checks. Landing gear is up, flaps are up. Alright. And uh, we're ready for flying. So our next waypoint after hitting Lake George is going to be a couple of really smaller lakes um, that are going to be west of us. So I'm going to set heading to 273. So once we hit this peninsula, I'm going to go on heading 273. See Lake George, it's one of the bigger, if not the biggest lake, I think, in, in uh, Florida. Don't quote me on that, but it does look fairly large on the map. Let's 
Let's see, where's my horizon? I'm just gonna ballpark. I noticed in this aircraft it's really hard to kind of keep it level without climbing or or uh, descending. Even with trim, you can see it has a tendency to either want to do one or the other, just looking at the vertical speed indicator. So I'm just going to do a reasonably good job of of watching that. I'm not going to get too obsessive as I, as I can at times about my altitude. And you know what? Let's uh, let's tune to Miami Center. I'm not going to call them up, but I'm just going to tune to Miami Center. Uh, oh, they're they've gone offline. Let's see if we can find 135.050. I think that's Jacksonville Center. Let's see if we can pick them up. Didn't have luck with this type of thing on Pilot Edge the other day. Okay, I'm going the wrong way. So right turn to heading 273. I'm looking for a couple of smaller lakes. Are those it? No, they can't be that close. But I see what those are on the map. Uh, 6317 field should be at your 3 o'clock. Correction, 2 o'clock. 12 port site. Mm, Roger, we have the field of sight. Should be just beyond these. Southwest 6317, clear vision approach, runway 8. Southwest 6317, the winds 320 at 5, runway 8, clear land. Roger, clear to land, runway 8. 60%. Potential aircraft monitoring, Jacksonville Center, Jacksonville Center is going to be stepping away from the scope for just uh, a bit of back and report on frequency. Okay, so we're getting some nice ATC going. This is on the VATSIM network, which is a free network for uh, ATC. I did a flight earlier on VATSIM. It was really fun. Um, I didn't stream it, probably should have, but I was kind of worried I may get task saturated because I was flying in a VATSIM event called Heathrow Real Ops. So I was flying the 737 NGX Boeing 737. Hey Adonis, welcome to the stream. I was just talking about my uh, 737 flight and I have to thank you again because what you recommended really helped me out. I lowered my settings in the performance manager for the NGX and I saw a really nice improvement in frame rates. I mean, I still, in heavy areas, it was still kind of uh, lower frames, but at least it was, I could fly the aircraft. It wasn't like five frames per second. It was like 10 or 15, and I could still fly it. So, and I don't, I don't mind the lower textures. To me, it doesn't make much of a difference in the NGX. So a big thank you to you for that, uh, for that advice. Okay, what are these lakes over here? Are those the ones I'm looking for? No, those are... I see what those are. The, the ones I'm looking for are a little bit beyond them. The water texture will look kind of murky, so it's hard to pick out the water from like the farm fields a little bit. They're not as distinct, I don't know, in this texture set, or maybe just in this part of the country. How was your flight to Lukla the other the other day? Did you have a good landing? So if you're if you're just joining the stream a, a little later, Adonis, I'm flying to Fantasy of Flight. It's a museum in uh, Central Florida. They've got a really nice YouTube channel. You, you may have even seen their YouTube channel by a, um, a guy named uh, Kermit Weeks, who's the founder of Fantasy of Flight. It's a really nice museum with historic aircraft like Warbirds, uh, DC-3, PBY Catalina, F-4F Wildcat, um, even World War One aircraft like an Albatross, uh, Fokker D7 or D8, no D7, and a whole other ton of other aircraft. Uh, 
constellation, like Akani, and uh, lots of lots of aircraft. It's a really cool museum, and there's some freeware scenery for it that I downloaded, and I really like flying there, so I flew from a little airstrip in an island. That's where I took off from, and then now I'm on my way to Fantasy of Flight. <laughs> Not a good landing, huh? That's all right. It's a, one of the most difficult fields, as I understand it. All right. So it looks like I may have missed my landmark. I was looking for. Hmm. So I think this, bo this body of water signals that I've gone too far, because I see it on my map. So I'm going to make my turn to 186. I'm not really sure. With these murkier water textures, I may have easily missed the lakes that I was looking for as my waypoint. See if I can spot them from a distance. No. Okay, so this makes the task a little more difficult because we're somewhat lost. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Our next major waypoint is Lake Wire, Lake Ware. Not sure how to pronounce that. Southwest 6317, welcome to Jacksonville, actually right when I... So, I'm going to wait a little bit and then make my turn. No, I'm going to actually make my turn now to 171. Excuse me. And now I'm looking for Lake Wire, Lake Ware. As my next waypoint. Hopefully I can disentangle myself from this mess and find out where I am again. <laughs> That's always the fun part of map and compass VFR. Oh, okay. Engine's got to burn on approach. Too high RPM for the altitude. Okay, that's interesting. Roger, text into the gate. Thanks, sir. Oh, that was a delayed response. Maybe that's what it was. Southwest 6317, to the gate, taxi via Alpha Hotel. Mm -hmm. Alright. Roger, Alpha Hotel. Now the fun begins, as always. Finding my way back to the field. <laughs> To offer up more excuses, uh, I think maybe the the compass indicator may be off because I was looking at some of my tracks in previous flights and I was flying like way off. But of course, it's easier to blame it on the compass than the pilot. <laughs> Jacksonville Center, one world twelve, now descending out of flight level three three zero to cross booze at one one eleven thousand two five zero. Actually, you know what, Adonis, um, this one's not equipped with an NDB. Uh, it doesn't have navigation radios, but uh, what I did was I installed pop-up. So I installed uh, these guys, nav aids, and I also installed the GPS. I don't think it was in there initially. Um, so I, I can use them, uh, and I have a radio stack too. I can use them if I need them. Uh, but I'm just gonna try to find my way back with um, with a map. And that looks like it may be Lake Wire in the where in the distance. Hopefully that's it. That'll be really good if that is the case. It's a distinct uh, pretty large lake, so I'm banking on the it's like a 
almost like a perfect circle. So that looks like it may fit the bill. We may be back on track. You can see the moon in the distance. Looks pretty nice. These set of textures look kind of hazy though. Um, the sky textures. I, I randomize before each flight, I go to Rex and randomize my textures for water, the sky, everything. And uh, sometimes it comes out really nice, sometimes it comes out 